This week, the important Australian-American leadership dialogue is going on, given the growing hostility in our region from China and the precarious nature of the AUKUS partnership, reaffirming the commitment between our two countries has never been more important. Credlin regular Chris Ullman is in the States for the dialogue, and I'm pleased to say he joins me now. Chris, uh, welcome. The threat China poses to Australia is pretty obvious, but given it's not such an immediate threat to the US, is it still top of mind over there in these discussions? Oh, yes, absolutely, James. It's top of mind. Look, the leadership dialogue hasn't started. Obviously, AUKUS will be at the top of the agenda here. It's a private initiative, so it's conducted behind closed doors. But I've been catching up with people in DC, some contacts since I got here. And, and one of the things that you can say about Washington is there is a bipartisan consensus on one thing, and that one thing is the threat posed to the United States across a whole range of of issues by uh, by China. So there is bipartisanship support for that here. And they're watching Australia quite closely because, of course, the United States is getting up the crown jewels, and that's its nuclear submarine technology to Australia, along with a whole lot of other things. And they're watching Australia's stance at the moment and wondering whether or not we're serious. They're wondering whether or not the amount of money we're putting towards the defence shows that we're serious about the strategic threat that Peter was talking about. There's a complete disconnect there. That's being noticed in Washington. They asked us to send a ship to the Red Sea, of course, to deal with the Houthis who are interrupting the trade traffic there. We were unwilling or unable to do that. And just recently, we're only now going to apparently send 320 personnel, one ship and one plane into RIMPAC, which is the biggest defence exercise run by the United States. So there's a level of disquiet about uh, in Washington about where Australia stands. So is support for the AUKUS partnership still rock solid? It absolutely is. This is something the United States wants to see succeed. So both sides of the aisle, as they say here, both Republicans and Democrats are right behind this. But they're questioning whether or not we're right behind this. And I think that that is something that they've noticed about the... Well, it, the the rhetoric coming out of Canberra, as we're trying to settle our relationship with China, we're not actually making a loud enough declaration to our own people, if you like, that that's where the strategic threat lies. With the Prime Minister, you'll often hear talk about the greatest strategic threat in, uh, since the Second World War, but he doesn't really articulate what that threat is. Now, if the Australian people are going to be up for funding this, mm. they need to know the nature of the threat. And what we find ourselves doing at the moment is being caught betwixt and between. We're trying to straddle two uh, very difficult partners, but uh, the United States has expectations as well. And if we don't meet those expectations, then I think that you'll find that the support for AUKUS here might begin to waver a bit. Let me ask you this on that theme. Uh, the US is about to share their nuclear technology with us. Obviously, that's top secret. Uh, what's the chatter about uh, Australia's Prime Minister, of course, taking a phone call from Julian Assange the moment he lands in Australia, Kevin Rudd walking him uh, through places? Um, has that got any bearing on the US confidence in us to keep secrets and uh, to be trustworthy partners? Well, James, you put your finger right on it. This was mentioned to me specifically yesterday by an American who watches this very, very closely and understands that Australia wanted to get Assange back, that that had gone on too long. But the song and dance around the welcome back of Assange was noted in Washington. Don't forget what he was charged with, was giving up US secrets. The thing that Australia, the case that we make to Australia, uh, to the United States, is that you can trust us more than anyone else. We are the, the, the safest of security partners. And then they see us not just welcoming back Julian Assange, but making a song and dance about the fact that we're welcoming back Julian Assange, someone that they want to charge with stealing their most precious secrets. So that was absolutely noted here. The other thing I'm wondering if they've noted is our debate over nuclear energy. I mean, we're going to get nuclear subs... But the uh, infantile debate we've had here with uh, government ministers posting photographs of three-eyed fish, has that made any uh, waves over there? 
Not on that front, but one of the other things I'm doing here is because I'm doing a documentary for Sky on the energy transition. I've been catching up with people in the United States about the, the debate here. Of course, the energy transition is happening everywhere around the world. Do you know what's happening here? Here they've got really cheap gas and they're basing any renewables that they're putting onto the grid on the basis that they have that cheap gas, something that we don't have in Australia. And the long-run effect of having something like nuclear energy is that it gives you baseload power, something that wind and solar does not do. So in conversations yesterday with people who are charged with running these systems in the United States, they're looking at us with great interest and thinking that the system that we're putting in place, A, will not work and will be massively expensive. And James, this is something that people need to discuss. The cost of the system that we are building will be the problem that we face, not the cost of nuclear, which is down the track. Now, even if we were going to do that, that is expensive. That is a long run thing. In the end, it will become necessary for the kind of power that we'll need to run a modern economy. But the fact of the matter is the system that we are building is both inexpensive, uh, is both expensive and will be extremely difficult to manage. So uh, we need to have a long, hard look at, at what we are building and the cost of that, and that will be reflected in your bills. And so this is the thing the government will not be able to run away from, James, is the fact that you can spin as much as you like. In the end, you can't battle with physics and that's the way the grid is actually run. And the economics of this will speak for themselves in the power bills that everyone will get. And there will be no future made in Australia if we are both a high wage economy and a high energy cost economy. And that's the track that we are on. Yeah, very good point. Just going back to our security arrangements with the US, uh, obviously a second Trump presidency looks likely. And Trump harbours, a would you say, a general antipathy for uh, security agreements such as NATO... Um, how safe is AUKUS if Trump is elected uh, to the White House? I guess that's a question we'll have to wait and see. Last time, of course, the Australians managed the Trump uh, relationship really quite well and because also he sees the world in, in a very mercantile way and all he cares about with trade is that the United States does better out of it in his worldview uh, than, than whatever country he's trading with. And Australia, of course, had a trade deficit with the United States and so that played reasonably well. Look, I, I think that, uh, that the issue with Trump is those large relationships we're seeing NATO is gathering here at the moment uh, in the United States for the 75th anniversary of that meeting, a very big meeting. The, the Prime Minister was invited, of course, and isn't coming. The, the Defence Minister, Richard Miles, is here to, to, to stand in for him. But uh, these relationships are absolutely important and they're things that Donald Trump questions, of course, questions the amount of effort that the countries of Europe's put in, put in and that's really his issue with NATO. So if he gets the idea that Australia is not putting the effort in that is required or the money in that's required to be a, a, a partner that's going to get the nuclear submarine technology from Australia, then I'm pretty sure he probably will start to question uh, that rela relationship as well. Yeah, Chris Yulman, thanks for your time, especially given it's very early in the morning over there. So uh, I really appreciate it.